Our final speaker this, uh, this morning and for the conference and for the mini symposium on osteoporosis Susan, will be Susan Ott. Uh, Susan is a professor of medicine at the University of Washington in Seattle. Uh, she received her bachelor's degree at Stanford, her medical degree at uh, University of Washington in Seattle. She was a resident at the University of California, Davis, and then a fellow back at Washington in Seattle. Um, She's published more than 70 original peer-reviewed articles and 40 uh, review articles and book chapters. And she's going to give a talk this morning on bisphosphonates, safety and effectiveness for osteoporosis treatment. Today we're going to talk about um, bisphosphonates and uh, the safety and efficacy. And in terms of conflicts of interest, um, I actually don't have any for the last five years um, to be completely um, compulsive, I spend a few hours consulting for a nonprofit research institute, and they do get money from one company that has to do with bone, but it's not directly to me. But in the past, I was uh, one of the co-principal investigators for the fracture intervention trial, um, and I say that just because I think it, it shows that I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. So here's an introduction of what I'm going to talk about. One is, I think it's important to go over again, even though they're very familiar and you use them all the time, just um, mechanistically how they're preventing the osteoporotic fractures. Um, then some potential um, negative effects on the skeleton and also the, the benefits. And I'm calling this short term. In, in terms of bone, you know, bones are slow. So short term for bones means five years. Um, then the effects of long-term effects, in, in which we don't really have very much data, but I'll go over what we have, and um, end up with a um, admittedly very opinion-based uh, management of patients, and it has to be opinion-based because there isn't any evidence. But the patients are there, and we need to know, I mean, you, don't, you need to know what to do, and um, we don't have the evidence, so then you, you just have to do something. So starting off, um, you know, the interesting story back in the 60s when uh, Herbie Fleisch was interested in pyrophosphate because he wanted to know why people weren't getting kidney stones and what caused demineralization and went to the same meeting at, at one time with uh, somebody who was, Francis, um, was looking at uh, toothpaste because they were putting in something that Procter & Gamble had just found that had been used originally to keep the um, calcium from depositing in pipes. And that was an analog of pyrophosphate. And they happened to meet at a meeting, and that resulted in an invitation for Dr. Fleisch to go to Procter & Gamble. And etidronate was first used um, as a result of that collaboration, not in osteoporosis, but in somebody who had calcification of the muscle a young girl who had an inherited disease and the etidronate dissolved the calcium out of the muscle. And they just incidentally found in their animals that it also stopped bone resorption. And now many years later, we know a lot about the, the mechanisms, but we now have second and third generations. So we're going to skip right ahead to 1998, right after um, bisphosphonate, alendronate was released. And this was a full-page ad in our Seattle paper, probably in papers all around the country. Caught my eye a little bit because she has my same name. But it was, you know, thanks to Fosamax and its power to rebuild bone, this woman is still paddling her own canoe after age 50. And um, the Fosamax is a breakthrough treatment that is non-hormonal and can truly rebuild bone. Now, if you look at her, she doesn't look like she would have any trouble without the Fosamax. And I, I actually maintain she would have been paddling her canoe after age 50 if she hadn't taken it. Um, on the other hand, she's really very gorgeous for somebody after age 50. And if I could take a drug that would make me look like her, I would go asking my doctor, I want that drug. And you look at all the ads, especially in the early ages, the ads aren't uh, women who had osteoporosis. The models in the ads were young, beautiful women who were about 40. And indeed, a lot of the people, a lot of the doctors have responded to those women who came in um, in their 40s and 50s wanting to take Fosamax. Now, that's just the model, but here's a real patient. Her name also happened to be Susan. And she was on TV in Seattle here. This is Susan Day. And she had um, gone on a trip to Europe and stepped off an escalator and snap.